What's going on everyone? Dwayne here from NorCal Nerf Club and today, yep, today's the day. Time to do the spring upgrade on my new Nerf Rival Edge Series Jupiter Rifle. I really do like this rifle a whole lot. Stock, it's pretty nice. You know, it's kind of like the regular uh, rival ranges as far as feet per second and power and accuracy on this is pretty good. I gotta say it's pretty good and that's what I, I want to stick with. We're gonna do a spring upgrade here and, and I just really hope that accuracy accuracy hangs in there. In fact, I think the spring upgrade might make a tiny improvement on the accuracy. But uh, let's get this busted open. I'm going to get all the screws out of here. I think there's like 25 screws to get out. I'm going to get them out of here and bust the shell open and we'll be right back. Okay, so yeah, I've gotten all of the screws out of here that need to be. I do believe I didn't, I didn't miss any of them here. That's always easy to do. And I think we're ready to crack this open. Oh, let me show you real quick. Um, all of the screws were all your same normal Nerf screws, these little babies right here, except they're, they're there was five of them that are these longer screws. I don't even see that. But they, they're pretty long screws, okay? And they go into the three holes right here up front, and then the two holes in the back also. That's the only ones that are different size so far. Okay, I don't think I have any other screws to do. I undo here. Maybe one that I'm thinking of. I know what the internals of this look like. Uh, of course, I already checked out. If you didn't get to see it, go look at it. Jared Gwines' video when the first time he took and opened one of these look up and let us look at the internals. And it's all it's all pretty simple. Um, yeah, I say we we you know we've been here before. This is pretty much nothing more than you know your normal what you're looking at in a Chronos. Once again, which uh, <laughs> by the way, it kind of bothers me a little bit sometimes when people say and they'll look at the uh, Jupiter pistol and and they'll say, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's just a Chronos in a rifle. Great. How many times have you handed your Chronos and said, man, I wish I had a rifle that performed like a Chronos? See, and I think that's what we're trying to accomplish here. This rifle is very accurate. I have to give it that. It is very, very good on its accuracy. Um, you don't get a lot of wild uh, rounds, you know, the ones that curve left or right. Uh, I did have a few of them, you know, once in a while. More often, I'd have them that, go, that end up going down. And uh, like I've said before, that, that just means it's really probably not hitting the hop up as hard as it needs to sometimes. So uh, spring upgrade, that might help that out a little bit. You know, we might be giving it some aid there. But yeah, let's take a good look here at the internals, see exactly how they are here. And uh, we'll see, you know, I, I am pretty sure that catch is gonna be pretty easy to get it out of there, the catch in the spring. I'm just kind of wondering, do I have to remove anything off of this bar? This bar, oh, that's good and solid. That's what we wanna look at here too. Because uh, I'm gonna be putting a, a, pretty, a pretty good spring in here. And it's got a nice little spring load on it, you know, perfect for chrono spring. This is what is gonna be going in here. Okay, and it should have no problems with it. That's pretty hefty plastic right there. I like that. Okay, and that's bolted in there pretty nice. Okay, uh, yeah, so far looking it over, I think we can just pop that catch right out of there. <laughs> I think that's gonna be easy enough to do. That's the other thing I wanted to look at over here on this end. Trigger's all been fine on this. This is a little weird on this. The uh, priming indicator back here doesn't really quite do its job. When you prime it, it goes back, sure, uh, but it's always kind of back. It just moves back just a little bit more when you prime it. A and then when you push the bolt forward, it goes back to where it was normally at when it's not primed. So really not serving a whole lot of a job there. And I don't think we're going to be able to do much with that. <laughs> but I do definitely want to keep that spring there. And that's an easy one to fall off. Uh, same up here. Okay. Trigger to catch. We got to keep that, that spring on there. And I see where that's got to stay loaded down in there. I don't think we need to remove any of that. Okay. I don't think so. We're going to find out here in just a second because I just wanted to Get a little bit more on this and re for reference, but I think, see, we're gonna be able, I might need to take that out right here, the little trigger. Thing. Oh, you know, after taking another look at this, uh, instead of having to completely take the priming 
bolt off of here, which I'm having a problem figuring out if I need to take all of that off there. It doesn't look like it. Uh, and I haven't flipped it over yet to see. But I'm kind of thinking, see, this is what I need to get to. I need to take that screw out and then the other one on the other side that's exactly like it. And then we'll just pull this mechanism forward. In fact, I can take the barrel off of it right now. We don't need that. Um, yeah, we can just, if I can just, why can't I? I should be able to, yes, I can just, see, I can just twist this around a little like this. And then get a screwdriver right in there. <laughs> no worries, no muss, no fuss, no twisting or anything. I can get a screwdriver in here. There we go. Hold that all the way still. I don't know if you guys, if you guys are still in frame over here or not. But that's going to be a whole lot easier then. Just wiggle that one free. The small one over there shouldn't be too hard to get back in there. Little screw. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to see something a little bit bigger than that. It's a thick screw. I'll give you that. But boy, you know, we're putting a spring load in here. And, I'm, you know, a little bit of part of modifying <laughs> spring modifications can turn into, you know, uh, uh, is this going to work right or not? Is this going to break? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we are. We got both of those screws out of there. Now, I should just be able to undo these like that. I sure can. And all that nice and neatly comes forward. And then we've got our plunger tube. And we've got, we've got the spring here and there we go that's everything okay now the end of the plunder here we're gonna go ahead and i've prepared a couple of uh pads already for this i got them over here so that i can double do the pads in there just a couple of the regular uh felt pads actually i think I got the, yeah i got these these are even the cheapies from dollar general i can just drop those right in there adhesive holds it on very very nicely yeah this is gonna work out that ended up being easier because this was uh yeah sorry about the traffic this was uh hey this is worrying me a little bit when i was gonna think i was gonna totally have to flip this um we have to finagle a couple parts in there back in there the trigger's not any big deal how the primer's gotta or how the priming handle or priming mechanism has to fit in there is uh, a little bit different but uh um, I'm looking also at this plunger rod, okay? Now, we've got that all in there. Now we've got to take a look at our spring. Let's get that ready. Like I said, you know, pro or perfect fit chrono spring from out of darts is what we're putting in here right now. Um, let's see the length. Let's see. Let's see. We, we should be about right. Everything in length. wrapped up all neatly and you know that is a nice big spring let's go ahead and well, I'm, I'm gonna they didn't loop that up much it is right there because I'm just gonna slide this back in I went ahead and lubed up the the whole plunger rod there and of course we've padded it like I said and just need to get that to line up so that that's facing up Stay right there with me. Okay, and then all I gotta really do is pull this down to so that it gets onto, make sure it gets into the hole in the inside, in the back of the plunger tube here. It's gotta slide into that little slot in there inside there. So we've got it in on the inside, on the outside there, or the inside. Okay, the spring is in. Okay, it's in there. Now, what we have to do, Start getting everything back and lined up in here. Got a little bit of compression going on there, and I'm hoping everything's seated in there nicely as far as the spring. Looks like we're gonna be okay. Yeah, there we go. 
seating these things back together where they need, they need to be. Oh, <laughs> well, you know what I got to do before I screw this one in and get everything seated back together. Let's get that screw back in on the other side over here. So I've got to get that on. Just line these up over here. Twist that back around. See, it, it'll allow you to. The only thing that's holding you back, pulling it all the way, is the end of the, uh, the priming rod there. Or priming bar, rather. Okay. Let's get that screw Gonna settle in there first. Now I can just get it. I can get it with a little screwdriver here, no problem. Oh! There we go. Get that to feed and settle there, and I want that screw nice and tight. Don't want that one coming loose inside there. Okay. Now, now we can begin to. Put this one back in. Yep, I believe I've got it. Everything, everything's nice and lined up, and I was able to get the catch back down in here, and it's it's held in place and everything real nicely. I've got to get that little piece back in here, and then uh, the rest of the trigger mechanism and everything back in. Okay. Uh, yeah, looking pretty good so far. I would say we're going to be able to we'll be able to prime it. It's going to be yeah, yeah. I'm able to. We're able to pull that back. Catch is all uh, back in, reseated, everything's back together. Um, let me see, just taking some looks over here. I don't want to go quiet so much, but I want to make sure everything's kind of lined up as, as far as that goes. Okay. And then we can start getting our... I know we need to get that. You know, I'm kind of wondering. Now we need to get that in this area, as well as that's got to line back up in there. And it does, very nicely. Look at that, spring almost went right home, said I know where to go. Here we go, spring, you're doing a fantastic job. Here we go. Now, let's get that reseated. It's all got to fit. Nicely so sits down. Oh, the hard thing. This is that's what I was trying to think of that I was wanted to say to you. The hard thing about this blaster and there's something that's gonna you gotta keep in mind on it is see now this whole mechanism wants to come out every time I want to set that down because I'm setting it down on the priming bolt over here. So it's pushing everything forward. When I'm trying to put every, push everything back in and get it seated and everything, it, once I set it down, the slightest pressure goes on it, it's gonna push everything right back out. Okay, so I did have it kind of held up on on this right here there we go and that's kind of a nice way to <laughs> get rid of that problem right there okay and then we need to get uh this piece back in there and it goes in kind of yeah just got to get this piece to seat up where it needs to be in here actually needs to go in and into this little post here There, get the spring go in its little place over here at the same time. And there we go. There we go. Everything is seated in there pretty nice. Okay. Make sure, make sure. Locks and everything are looking in place. <laughs> this is one of the ones, you know, because we're breaking into, into new territory here. Uh, you know, I, I've never seen one of these taken apart and never seen anybody put a spring into one. It's just, it, you know, we've all been here before. It's, it's no big deal. It's not that hard. Um, but yeah, a couple of little different unique things on the, that we have going on on the Jupiter rifle. Boy, I hope that's, yeah, I hope that's all in the right. Yeah, that should be it. That should be it. Make sure, yeah, that's going to be in its place. And when it, I want to make sure, I have to kind of hold some things together here, but let's see if our bolt slides back. So, getting a little iffy there. But, anyways, I just want to make sure that this little spring and the catch right there is right exactly where it needs to be. There, like that. 
I believe that's all in there where it needs to be. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I've got to get the, uh, I've got to get this piece back in here. That should be really easy. Real. Yep, looks like everything is in place where it needs to be now. I don't really want to set this down again. I got the, uh, got the, st the, the, the stand back there in the back. That support is all back in there, lined up. Trigger is in need of getting the spring all the way in there. There we go. Got to do, got to reset these things a lot. Just the way, like I said, the biggest thing to be wary of is that bolt's still on there. Every time I set this down, it wants to push everything right back through it. But yeah, before my camera battery dies, I need to bolt this all back together and then we'll come back and get some results a little bit later on. I'm back and as you can see, everything is all put back together nicely, all working out. Got to test it a little bit last night. Had to wait quite a while for my camera to uh, recharge last night, so I never did get to finish up this video, but I'm back today to do just exactly that. We'll get some chrono results on the Jupiter rifle here in just a minute. But I want to touch upon a couple of things. Um, one thing we got a little bit heavier trigger pull is you saw inside there, the catch and firing mechanism on the Jupiter rifle is a little bit different than what we're looking at here on the Mercury or on the two Heracles or on the Kronos, which they have a lot of similar internals. This one, as you saw, is a bit different. Okay, it's got a bolt sled there. You know, you've got the connecting rods here that pull this whole mechanism back, your loading mechanism and all that. Okay, so that's a little bit different deal. I did see inside there that you might be able to get to the catch if you just disconnect this priming indicator here. And you can snap it back in there, but it really doesn't do anything anyways. I noticed that this, the priming indicator will go back when you prime it and when you push it forward, it goes back to where it originally was when it wasn't primed. So it really isn't a functional thing anyways. But, uh, and then the other thing I want to touch upon this, if you're gonna modify this, uh, be real wary that it is a little bit more difficult than other ones in the way that, you know, because you have the bolt back here, you can't ever set the blaster down while you're working on it. It just pushes all the internals out. You can't bump that in any way or it pushes the internals out. Very sensitive for the trigger spring, um, the little, little lock mechanism up here between the catch and the bolt sled, that, that little deal right there with the spring. Uh, yeah, that one coming undone and then this down here. All at the same time, these springs will get just undone really quick. There's two right there that'll pop out right now on you when you're just trying to put the shell back on. So it got to be a little bit tricky for that, but we got it all back together. Um, it's just a matter of a little bit of patience, I guess, and, and I, I finally got it. But it, it took quite a few tries of, of uh, you know, <laughs> these things, one spring's gonna release, the main spring catch and everything's gonna pop out of there. That's gonna pop that release. It's gonna pop the trigger spring out. If that got bumped, it's definitely gonna, you know, push out the, uh, the trigger spring out of its place. This, you're messing around with that, trying to put it back together, and those things come undone over there, and you're just over, just, getting it into the right place at the right time and being able to get that shell on there is a little bit tricky. Definitely a lot more than these. Uh, the Mercury and the Heracles pistols, I, I gotta say, they're even easier to do a spring upgrade on than a Kronos. That's amazing about them. Similar mechanisms, but this is a good bit different and be wary of a few things in there that uh, you know you want to be careful of because you do have to remove quite a bit of the mechanism just to get to the spring and everything. But it is working out pretty nicely, um, but we do got to take it over here onto the chronograph and to do that I am going to take off of this, this bipod off of here. Don't need it. Uh, we'll retract that. A couple things I really do like about it. I like the bipod and the whole tripod thing and everything. It's got a nice look to it and everything. But when you take that off, now you, you know, you went from like the sharpshooter sniper kind of thing to any competition rifle. I, I'm, I, I can't wait to get this one out on the court. I, you know, I play a lot of close quarters battling and I, I, I might not charge this or choose this as my main primary for a big HVZ event. But, I, you know, how often do you pay big HPZ events, you know, one, once or twice a year, maybe, if you're willing to travel a lot, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's just, this one's going to be a great one for close quarters battling, uh, a little bit, 
you know, a little bit less capacity there, 10 rounds and everything, but that's fine. It's easy enough to, to reload. I don't mind, you know, you gotta make your blaster work for you, so. <laughs> And but it is very very accurate as you saw in that opening segment. It is really an accurate blaster And I got to go grab some rounds and then we're gonna get this on the chronograph Okay, so what I did is I went and grabbed ten proton rounds five orange ones and five blue ones and Because they, they tend to they tend to travel pretty fast. We're gonna probably see some pretty good numbers out of these Okay, and we are all set and ready to go. I think that's good and level and let's take our first shot, 132.5, all pretty good. Okay, 132.8, staying consistent right there. 135.4, that's pretty good. There we go, 131.8, see I like these numbers right here. We're staying above 130, which I really, uh, for Rival, I, you know, the sweet spot I kind of think is like between 125 and 130. Uh, I find a lot of comfort and success in that range, uh, right, or that range, there we go, 134.8. That range right there, feet per second, is always pretty nice. And we're staying there, we're staying pretty solid. Oh, 128.5. Okay, make sure I'm getting this real square, nice and level. If it just brushes the side or anything, it's gonna go a lot slower, of course. Like that, 123.9. Okay, that was our seventh shot. 137.7, I think that's our high so far, isn't it? Okay. Ninth and next to the last shot, 134.1, that's pretty nice. And our last and final shot, let's make it a good one here. 143.6, all right, listen to me on that one. <laughs> Woo, that's a pretty big range, uh, but uh, that's some good firepower right there. That's working out really nicely. Woo, 143.6, okay. Well, let's go over here now. Let's make sure you get this into, into frame somewhat so you can kind of see the numbers over here. Our max was at 143.6, of course. Minimum 123.9. I might have, might have been just a little bit off of naming that. Like I said, we got the heavier trigger point. You really got to get a hold of it. Be conscious of that. If you jerk it to one side or another, you know, your shot's going to be off, especially here on a chronograph. It's going to bounce off the side and be kind of funny. Average, though, 133.5. I like that number. That's a really nice average. That's cool. 133.5. It's up there, got a little bit of heat on it. You know, and like I said, and then it's maintained its accuracy, accuracy too. It's pretty nice. Prime on it isn't too hard. Uh, the trigger pull, like I said, is a, little, is a little bit hard. And now the more I think about it, you know, so was the Mercury pistol at first when I put that spring in there. And now it, it seems just fine. I haven't done anything different with it, but it seems, I don't know, just a little bit more, just normal. Um, this one's just a little bit harder. Like I said, you just got to get a hold of it a little bit more and squeeze it back real nice and smooth and quick. And it works out just fine. But, uh, yeah. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you got a Jupiter or if you were planning on buying a Jupiter, you can see how that you can do a spring upgrade on it pretty easily. It's uh, not, not a big, big deal, but a little bit different than these ones. That's okay. We're still able to do it. Uh, just the tricky part is maybe getting that shell back together and everything kind of putting together right exactly where it needs to be at the time. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can take a second to give it a thumbs up. Take it easy, and I'll see you in my next one.